Welcome to Kung Fu Havoc number two. Alright. So as you know, I'm a martial artist. I would say I'm the best in the world, but I would like not to have um, a legal dispute with everyone else. Although I don't have a problem taking a knee to somebody's face to prove it. That was a semi-joke. So, what you see before you, before I raise the camera up, was these three bottles. And I know what you're thinking. Why do you have these bottles, James? That you can't hold your hands on. Alright, so we're going to talk some legit shit. Alright? These are bottles to you. They are weapons to me. Understand this, that when I tell you something about martial arts, nine times out of ten, it's closer to right than wrong. Alright? Now these are empty bottles. Not as dangerous as full bottles because they don't have the weight differential that you would need to actually do damage to someone. An empty bottle still hurts, but it's more like an nuisance or an annoyance. That also depends on the size of the bottle. This bottle's a lot thicker than these bottles, which you can crush. This one you can barely crush. Same hand, same amount of pressure. Now, this bottle of water, very dangerous to the computer. Good thing it's sealed. More dangerous to you if I hit you in the sternum or the throat. Because see, it fits in these little tiny spots. All right? Never underestimate what you don't qualify as a dangerous weapon. I do qualify as a dangerous weapon. This is a book. The right angle. Shoving in the right spots. You can do damage if you know what you're doing. This is a pick comb. We have these three things here. Very easily to subject up somebody's nose into someone's eye, down in their throat. Same way can apply to this side or this side and even the blunt side there. So what you fail to understand about martial arts is it's not always about nunchucks. Thomas and hula hoops. It's not always about that. It's about how great your skills are with whatever you touch. As a martial artist, it is very important to know that everything you touch should be classified as your weapon, or you have not been taught certain martial arts. Now, in my case, I have been street fighting since I was 6 to the age of 12. I was doing martial arts since I was seven. I still currently practice martial arts. They just all mush together as one. And I just call it Kung Fu because it's a much easier thing than to come up with my own system or my own name of a system. And yes, my nose is running. I just came in from outside from walking the damn dog that does not belong to me. That being said, we will continue. This napkin folded in the right way. Sharp like an airplane. No buoyancy. More than likely can't hurt someone because they don't know what they're doing. This napkin folded the right way where I can hide something in there like a fork can hurt you. Now the napkin is a lot more flimsy than a piece of paper. But if I fold an index card the same way that I fold this napkin I could be a dangerous person with that index card. No, you're probably laughing and saying that's not possible, but um, people get cut by paper all the time. And what is an index card? It's very thick paper. Come on, people. Use your brain. There's almost nothing that I can't use outside of a blade of glass, I mean a blade of grass, to hurt you. If necessary, maim you, injure you, and do some very good damage. Now, in Kenpo, they teach you about your pressure point system. It's basically the same pressure point system that you will learn in yoga with your chakras and all that shit. But in Kenpo, they teach you you have 365 of these things. Everywhere there's a joint, there's a pressure point. So everywhere there's an indentation in your body, there is a joint, a pressure point, or an artery 
that I can use to manipulate your arm and things like that, which goes back to also a keto with I was talking about earlier on Instagram about how people are shitting on a keto. And now, here's the thing about a keto. You can shit on it all you want, but when somebody rolls you and puts you in an arm bar and puts their knee in your shoulder blades right there, it's a whole nother ball game when you're on the bottom and someone has you in an arm bar or your arms up here and it's twisted. So your hands like this and your arms like this and it's straight and it's hyperextending your elbow and they're bending your hand in and they have their knee in your shoulder blades. Which once you go numb, you're not going to feel anything anyway. But those are things that you have to be aware about. Now think about martial arts. Convenience, adaptation, and just being able to focus in a fight are very fucking important. And the reason why they are important is because they are a part of fighting. You know, um, probably couldn't beat you with a stuffed animal. Unless that stuffed animal had like buttons, like for a nose or like eyes and stuff like that. I got a better chance of beating you with my elf versus beating you with my Pikachu. Unless Pikachu's ears are hard and I can jab them into your eye sockets, you know, or up your nose. Now, when I was uh, 16, I worked with a Green Beret and he showed me some shit. He showed me how to fuck a motherfucker up with a spoon. He showed me how to fuck a motherfucker up with my pinkies. So, you know, experience is everything. Now, the reality of fighting is I got to get through your defenses. So if you're good at boxing, if you're good at blocking, I have a problem. It's called an obstacle. Obstacles are for killing. So if you throw a punch and I can break it and slide up your arm kung fu style and catch you in the throat, fight's over. If I can't catch you in the throat and catch you in the rib or liver, I'm going to shock your system and try to bring you down. When I take you down, I'm going to try my best to put my elbow or my knee into your dip inside of your collarbone in here or your shoulder blades, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to stop you from hurting me. So for those who are shitting on Aikido, I want you to go watch a couple of Aikido things. Not the Aikido fancy roll over, spin you around, flip you over your back, and that kind of thing, but the bottom of that. Because the end of that, most of the time, ends with somebody in some kind of grapple or lock. Now what you fail to understand is that karate, Wing Chun, Bushu, Kung Fu, Shaolin Ru, Tiger Claw... Um, praying mantis, it's a couple of other ones I can't think of the name of, but most martial arts have a grapple technique. And now here's that thing about grappling. It's hard to grapple somebody when they're covered in sweat. It's also hard to grapple somebody when they're not wearing a gi. In the street, you don't have any of those options, you know. You're going to be covered in sweat, but a lot of people generally take their clothes off when they're in a street fight. I never figured out that really, I mean, I understand it, but I never figured out why until, you know, I really got to thinking about it. I was like, you know, well, nine times out of ten, you get in a fight and you're going to be sweating. And nine times out of ten, I've never taken my clothes off in a damn street fight. And I was like, no, we're not going to do that. You're coming at me. Whatever I have on me is going to be part of my arsenal. You know, and that would be the way that is. I will make a second part to this video after I go lay someone out about these damn lights.